I'm <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi, everybody. Uh, so today we are here for session number five of The Power of Urban Art. And we're going to interview street artist Shane O'Driscoll. And I can see that Shane is online already. Perfect. We'll be ready in a couple of seconds. And here we are. Hi, Shane. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for uh, accepting the invitation. No, no, um, thank you for having me. Um, so today we're going to go through a um, couple of uh, important information regarding yourself as an artist and your art practice. Uh, but if we want to start with an introduction from yourself on yourself. <laughs> Who I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, basically, uh, my name is Shane O'Driscoll. Um, I'm an artist from Cork. Uh, basically, I'm, a, I'm an abstract artist. I practice mainly um, in print, printmaking, uh, while also kind of painting murals um, as well. So I kind of tend to dabble between the two. Um, I've got artwork in the permanent connection, collection of the National Gallery, uh, UCC Trinity, uh, Oris Nuke Turan, and um, anyone else who will have my work in their house. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much me. Uh, that's fantastic. Like, and it is really interesting, though. Uh, I will keep this question for uh, later. But I'm really interested in the translation of your artworks from the language of graphic art into mural art. But we'll keep that for uh, like oh, yes. very Save that for later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, you, you, how have you been uh, keeping busy recently? Like, which are your recent projects and? Um, I kind of, I have, I, I kind of haven't stopped and kind of want to see people who just, I can't really kind of switch off. I'm always doing things. So I think when, when we kind of, we moved down, when this kind of started, we headed down to, to West Cork, uh, with my, to my wife's family. So we've been kind of down here on a farm in West Cork and because the studio where I normally work in core printmakers is closed, uh, I've no access to kind of my, my normal screen printing materials. So yeah. um, I kind of just bought a whole load of bag of kind of cans of paint down with me just to kind of plant a bit of painting down here. I kind of hope to kind of start um, painting on canvas and stuff. It was something I kind of been planning for a while, uh, which I still haven't got around to. I basically just bought a load of paint, paint cans down the first week. I just went at any surface that they'd allow me paint on. And I kind of started painting down here on the farm about three years ago, just painting on old kind of disused farm machinery and kind of cat oh, feeders okay. and, and old walls. And um, really kind of got a good response. People kind of enjoyed the kind of, the difference of kind of seeing hard edge abstract artwork um, in these kind of rural settings. You know, you'd normally see it say in an urban setting and suddenly you put it against a field full of sheep there's a massive kind of um, difference. Position, yeah. Yeah, totally. It's just, it's, and, and it kind of gives a new purpose to, you know, a JCV bucket that's been sitting rusting in the field for two or three years. Suddenly it becomes something different, a bit more sculptural and it kind of gives a new lease of life. Um, so I kind of, I kind of hit that hard the first week and just painted everything. And then once I did mm -hmm. that, ran out of paint, um, I kind of said, wouldn't it be going to great just to have, a physical record documenting this rather than just being on my phone. So I kind of put together a zine and, and made a zine out of it, um, which Maybe. is quite fun as well. So did you keep a record of all, the, all of that? Like, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was actually from the month of lockdown to that, to that month, three years ago was the first time I actually painted down here on the farm, but it was always a big kind of, um, something I kind of did when we came down here just to kind of pass the day. Uh, if I had some cans in the car, I'd go and do a bit of painting just to kind of, just to do something. Um, but it was only down here and being down here even more so than we kind of originally planned. Uh, they kind of resonated with me a bit more and it kind of definitely led to me thinking a bit more as to what I'd do going forward as well. You know, it's kind of one thing, painting a mural or, or a building uh, where it's the flat surface and you're kind of transforming the whole area. But when yeah, you're down yeah. on the farm and you're painting, it's just an object uh, in a space. So it's it's just stuff. I, I generally don't kind of think too much about the art when I'm making or doing it. I can let it kind of be its own thing. 
but um, I've definitely spent more time kind of thinking about why I do it really actually, which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah. And that's kind of a, one of those things I never really did before. And it, that's what time's allowed, you know? Uh, it's, it all sounds fantastic. And like, I'm looking for, can we see like our, your recent artworks visible on your Instagram or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of f flick through them there. I mean, it's kind of a bit of a, a hodgepodge between recent artworks on the farm um, and photo photographs I've been taking around the area as well. I've been, I've been kind of just getting, focusing more on just taking photos and, and again, documenting the area around here yeah, yeah. Um, and just noticing kind of patterns and even just taking pictures of people's post boxes, which I'd never really noticed before. <laughs> Suddenly I have a little collection of people's post boxes, but then you kind of realize that there are people's kind of connection now to exactly. their shopping, you know, connecting with people like that. Suddenly it's a, to it's a whole different viewpoint and it's kind of cool down here because you know we're down here in the country and you know one house could be a mile away from another and a lot of people have actually kind of made their own post boxes they're all quite distinct and unique and people have kind of got creative making their own post boxes which is kind of cool as well you know well, that's amazing it's a whole new project <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah just <laughs> unintentional projects that kind of crept into me from kind of walking around and looking at things you know yeah it's that it's all about that you know art it's uh, seeing the world through the artist's eyes and connection. Absolutely, and yeah. And I think I kind of found even last year I was kind of quite busy. You kind of get in. I kind of found I got myself kind of in a in a mode. You know, I was kind of constantly kind of doing stuff for uh, exhibitions in the studio. You know, just kind of continuously putting out work and putting out work. And it was nice just to kind of step back and um, put a stop. Sometimes it's nice when something's taken away, obviously you've got to put your attention elsewhere. And this obviously wasn't an intentional thing that happened, but yeah, there definitely yeah. will be a lot of thoughts come out of this going forward that will kind of kind of move forward to new thoughts and work, which is always nice to to do because I think, I think if you're kind of in the studio and you're thinking about trying to make something new, you're overthinking it. And I think the things I've certainly found over the years when making my own artwork, um, it's things that kind of become without thinking or by mistake have been the things that have kind of point to me in a new direction you know yeah yeah that's absolutely fascinating like it's great mm. um well done uh well done for you. Seriously, i didn't have to do anything <laughs> it just <laughs> happened um so um now when did you start with murals like when you did you first approach mural art um i, I actually had to check it up there recently, it was about four years ago uh, when I first did, um, I suppose, a big kind of large scale mural. Like I, I kind of toyed around years ago with kind of paste ups and even printing onto a piece of wood and, and putting them onto walls. Uh, but I'd never actually, I think, kind of um, tackled a large wall um, until about four years ago. And it, was, it was a friend of mine, Gary, I worked with, and um, mm -hmm. he was kind of a, he was a graph artist and we were just working together in, in a design studio and he kind of just said, look, um, if I get us a wall, would you be interested in painting or do a collaboration? I was like, yeah, hundred percent. Um, cause it was something I've always, I've always, always been a huge fan of kind of street art, urban art, graffiti, you know, even back in New York, you, you know, decades ago. And, and still, I still have the photographs I took from back in kind of the nineties and stuff like that, you know, and, and it, there was, you know, it was kind of nice or something. It was just always in my radar I was always collecting books and stuff like that so it was a great chance to do that and then basically Gareth said look uh, I think you're kind of you know he knew my artwork my print work you know just the bold graphic shapes he says look we'll do a collaboration uh, if you um, just put down maybe a, a foundation setup of, of, of shapes and I'll just do an overlay with you know graffiti um, use his abstract um, lettering so we did that so I kind of he we got a picture of the wall it was in a Tivoli um, car park uh you know a famous kind of painting mm -hmm. spot there in dublin i think it's yeah. gone now actually and um so we he just got the wall space and we kind of walked up one morning and it was it was brilliant we spent like you know 10 12 hours there just at the wall painting and learning loads really enjoying it meeting people you know meeting other painters as well which is great um you know i, I kind of would have known these people i would have known their work but i wouldn't necessarily have known them at a, at a social level like that you know um so it's always nice to kind of meet people like that and see them working. And, I, you know, I love seeing the process of how things are made as well. Like that. So you, I got to see other people make their work. And, uh, yeah, we just kind of worked away. I mean, we literally, Gar we just used kind of tail ends of cans of paint that Gar had. We just took some paint from the office that was left over from the refurb 
So it was really pretty loose and just kind of fun. And that was kind of the key part as well of just kind of enjoying ourselves. And um, when we did that the first day, I, I just, I kind of was hooked from then. And again, I had the confidence to kind of do large work and paint stuff. And um, I think kind of on the, on the back of that, I was just like that. I kind of applied to water for walls. You know, at least I had one wall in my portfolio yeah. that I could kind of send to people. Uh, and yeah, that was kind of four years ago and I kind of haven't stopped. So that brought you directly to Water for Wolves. I mean, in fact, the way in which you were describing the experience of your first mural in Dublin, it clicked in my head, like, with what Water for Wolves is, apart from, like, the, the beauty of the event, it is that it works like a platform for artists where you come down to Waterford and you basically meet with other artists. And Absolutely, meet- yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it is like I again I thought I you know as I said I kind of would have known a lot of uh, the kind of people from the scene just from the work again. But like I love going down and on the Saturday night or whenever when people are just kind of hanging out and having a few drinks and chatting because you know you have be in contact all year round through Instagram and general social media and everyone's always kind of chat to each other and stuff like that. But you know you, you rarely kind of get a chance to kind of hang out together, um, you know and. Again, even you know, you would I would have known you know you, you kind of see the big name kind of artists and stuff, people kind of traveling and going to all these festivals, and the fact that something like that can happen or is happening in Ireland, it, it's amazing, you know, and especially the caliber of work and the fact that it showcased, you know, an equal pl- platform Irish and international artists. Um, I think the first year I was down I was painting next to Mantra, and um, like just to see him work over those three days was insane. Like, and I mean, I was just there kind of standing and painting my little shapes and he was doing this amazing photorealistic um uh painting from a photograph like of a friend of his in brazil and mm-hmm. he just kind of just it was just amazing to see it kind of transpire over the two or three days and again like that's you know it's one thing seeing this this over the years or online on you always see the final images you always see the nice photographs in the surroundings but to see uh artwork being made is yeah. amazing like that and even you know, the other conversations you have with people passers-by over the weekend you know people just something for the chats is great as well uh and people do appreciate uh i suppose the the the, you know, the people that are that are kind of coming to waterford as well to see the art and it's totally transformed the city as well you know um i remember the first year i went down there like i hadn't been to waterford in about i'd say probably since a school tour to see <laughs> celt world or something way back in the day and uh, it was it was not that it wasn't on my radar. It was just I was always kind of going Cork Dublin, Cork Dublin, or or kind of west. But yeah. I'd never kind of go around that nook. And uh, I just kind of drove down there for the day and spent the whole day just walking around and seeing walls that kind of friends had painted. And it was great to see them in their physical space as well, you know. Um, and again, that that just kind of adds to the power of the piece as well when you see it there physically and the scale also too. You know that kind of definitely resonates when you see it down there. That's great, and that uh, brings us uh, directly into the uh, news of like uh, you've been announced yesterday on our uh, Facebook page as uh, yeah, hot off the press. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, if you would like to uh, tell us a bit um, more about. Uh, this year uh, participation, your participation to the festival and how all of the, all of it happened. Yeah, like uh, it, it kind of basically, it, um, I'd be funded by the Arts Council this year through the kind of the, the COVID uh, grants scheme. So again, like that, you know, it's kind of, it's good, especially now this year as well, any kind of arts or cultural institute that are kind of struggling at the moment with funding. So it's been good to kind of get funding like that and to go down. Like I, like I genuinely was uh, quite sad that, the fact that I would go down this year like that, then this opportunity kind of arose and I was like, absolutely jump on it. And um, it was kind of good because it kind of got me thinking about the piece I'd make as well um, because of the format of the system this year as well, because there won't be that, um, <coughs> sorry, um, you know, there won't be that kind of physical aspect that everyone will be painting over the same week and meeting up. It's literally one artist in, one artist down. Um, so, you know, I was kind of thinking of that and it was, it was kind of my the kind of idea, the concept around my piece is this kind of creative connections, uh, mm. which was something I kind of, you know, I've noticed definitely since the start of lockdown, there's still been kind of a, a, a creative connections through people, people are still creating, um, but there's there's kind of a, almost a stronger bond between uh, creative people and, and appreciation for creativity. So 
I've kind of planned my piece around kind of a link between Cork and Waterford. So it's almost like a creative bloodline. So again, it's kind of a, a composition of abstract shapes, but the, the color palette will kind of come from uh, Cork. The colors of Cork, I suppose, my, my home turf and, and Waterford. So it'll be an abstract bloodline kind of flowing, you know, and the mingling of the red and blues uh, of the two different kind of uh, cities. Because it, it is a key thing like that. And I think it's even, you know, because people can't just, you know, everyone can kind of do what they normally do, but especially creatives as well. Because uh, that's my, uh, I suppose, my realm that um, you appreciate what people are doing and putting out and, and trying to kind of survive and stay going as well. I mean, that thing, I haven't been able to uh, make work. I haven't made a new print in the studio in, in three, four months, you know, so you're kind of finding new ways to keep yourself um, kind of flexing and going. But I mean, that's kind of a good resilience to creative people as well like that. You know, I mean, you know, if you're working like myself in a freelance basis, then you, you never know what is coming from week in and week out. So it, there's nothing strange in that regard, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so you just kind of, you know, just, you, you just kind of roll it in, in that way. But I mean, there's definitely been kind of good, stronger conversations happening. And I think that's, that's what my piece is. And, and that's what it's about. And happy to have it, have it funded by the Arts Council and to be the other again this year, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, definitely. And uh, like to give a bit of context, maybe to the people who are not um, uh, updated on uh, on the new festival structure. Uh, so basically this year due to COVID-19, uh, we are going to go ahead uh, in um, in order to comply with the health and safety restrictions. So the artists will be coming, but not all together in a four days time, but they will be coming from uh, July 13th till August 28th on a rotation basis so that we can ensure the safety of the artists. And also we can make sure that the social distancing is respected. Uh, so is it going to be a new format, uh, but we really didn't want to give up uh, the festival and we wanted to preserve uh, the, the event itself, not only uh, because it is a unique opportunity and now more than ever, it's important to bring art and color into the life of people, uh, but also because uh, it's important for the artists uh, uh, and as an opportunity of employment for the artists itself. And, uh, which, I mean, so many uh, events all around the globe have been cancelled because of the virus. That is really, really important that we keep trying to do our best to maintain the artwork and, you know, sustain uh, each other and just keep uh, Absolutely, keep on trucking. Yeah, you know, that's kind of it. And it's you know, I've seen I've a lot of friends I get like that who haven't been able to kind of make work, or you know, um, musicians as well who are kind of struggling. And you know, like any live events like that that can't happen, you know, that's kind of a massive blow to any kind of creators. And you see, um, you know, people kind of rallying around and finding ways to promote and continually support the arts, um, which which is a key thing, definitely. You know, and it's it would be a shame if it didn't go ahead. And I mean, even because of the nature of it you know, you are still kind of painting. It is outdoors, but obviously you kind of have to adhere to everything that's going on. And uh, it is great that it is definitely kind of going ahead, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, we are really looking forward to it. Uh, but uh, I think now we can move into that question uh, that I had at the beginning, like how do you find it translating your art uh, from the graphic language as in from printmaking into mural art? Is there any difference? Like, I mean, it's the support basically, but uh, how do you find it? Um, in regards to kind of just the the style itself, or at the overall experience, like you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of, I suppose, it's different. It's, it's kind of funny because it's I kind of sometimes I paint murals are kind of different. Some are a bit more kind of free form, and generally when I kind of make my artwork, uh, I'd have a loose kind of composition in mind, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of generally when I work up all my artwork would be kind of made in, in I suppose on Illustrator uh, um, design kind of package so like my background I would have worked in graphic design and art direction for nearly 10 years so that, that is my kind of background so you know I don't have kind of a fine art painting background in that regard I did when I studied graphic design uh, we did printmaking and a bit of photography uh, so that was how I kind of got into the fine art element of it and you know, just appreciation of the, of the different formats where 
you know, I was doing graphic design, obviously everything is on a computer. It's quicker, it's faster, it's more immediate. You make a mistake, you can delete it in a second. Obviously, if you're in a studio making prints, it isn't as easy to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate and I love both different ways. I, I like the kind of time and the tactile element that you take to making the artwork. Um, while the graphic design work can be a bit faster. Uh, but when I do make my prints, I have a loose composition in mind and then I'd expose that series of shapes on a screen. But then again, but when I'm actually printing them physically, I allow a bit of... Um, you know, a bit of play. So I might twist page or turn it. I might change it in color. I might tape up a section. Um, and that's the kind of part that I enjoy, that kind of unknown where you kind of, it's almost like a, a visual kind of puzzle they have to solve. And that's kind of what I do with the murals as well. I'd have a loose kind of idea in mind what I'm going to do. But, you know, it's one thing, someone might send you a picture of a wall that you're painting. And then once you start working it, you're, you're suddenly in the physical space. Yeah, you yeah. kind of see what what I'd imagined doesn't really work here. I've got to add a bit more here because suddenly it's a totally it's a different. I'm in a physical environment, so that's different as well. And it's three dimensional too. And if you're walking around like the first wall I did, wall I did in Waterford, it was a building, so it kind of wrapped around, kind of zigzagged, and as you kind of walked around the building, obviously the shapes kind of changed a bit. Mm -hmm. So suddenly then you're kind of thinking in a three D uh, sense. It isn't a flat wall. So how will that look if someone was coming around the corner? How will that series of shapes kind of play with you as you walk by as well? Um, so it's, it's very different because obviously the artwork is very kind of flat 2D and then the art uh, murals again, you know, if it is in the wall, even if it's a window, how do you work around that? Do you integrate yeah, the, yeah. the windowsill? Do you block it out by doing a block color or do you just kind of embrace it and just paint the windowsill like a, a hard black or something that suddenly it's a, it's a straight line? Um, and that's kind of what I've been doing like in the farm machinery as well. Like I painted on um, old, like a cement mixer. So, you, and I painted on an old, some kind of a grabber for a JCD, but it was all kind of wires and stuff coming out of it. So different wires would be painted different colors and it, it's kind of a different process. So uh, it's very different because like, I suppose my graphic scale style is very kind of flat and bold and 2D and, and I like that. When you transfer it to the murals, it becomes three-dimensional. Even mm -hmm. where, like, you could be, you could be painting, um, like a curb, or I painted little stones that are leaning against the wall, and suddenly that becomes part of the art, which never really was intended to start. And suddenly, this old piece of rubble or an old um, breeze block you painted orange, and it becomes a kind of sculptural element. Uh, and that's the fun. It's kind of the joy of embracing the area you're in, you know. Amazing. So it's like the art actually embraces all the objects and it turns them into something completely new. And it's like if the process changes, then like, uh, yeah, you're led by the process that influences. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of funny just, you know, when you're, when you're painting, especially in public places, you kind of see the effect that, you know, simple color and shape can have on an, on an area and an environment, totally transform it. And, change people's perceptions like even you know I've, you could just paint oh, it could be it could be anything it could be i just want to think back the most random things i have painted um and you know you could even if it was just in a line of bins if you paint a one bright color or in stripes something different suddenly it stands out and it makes a statement in a space and you totally it just kind of catch your attention and that's the thing too you know like even when you're painting old walls or old hoardings it could be you know, it's fallen into disrepair. No one really, even when I was painting the mural in Cork there, I painted a large building there on, it's the old ESB substation um, on Caroline Street. It's an amazing structure, beautiful building, um, architecturally like stunning, but it had fallen into disrepair. It kind of fallen out of view of the people. It just wasn't on people's radar visually from their daily walks, you know, and even when I just put the first base color down, I just, it was just pink before any shapes got onto it. People were stopping and they're going, whoa, well, like, has this building always been here? Like, is it is it new building? It's like, no, it's been here like for decades. Just that simplicity of adding color, it, it suddenly gives a new life uh, and a kind of a new voice, I suppose. And then when I started layering on the kind of colors and shapes and, and giving a bit more kind of vibrancy, people were stopping and people were telling you about the history of the building and some people who'd worked in the building. And yeah. that's a cool thing as well. You Anywhere you do go or anything you paint on, people are kind of attracted to you and want to tell you more about it, which is great because I don't want to really go to... You know, I, I want, it's great to know where you are painting or, or any kind of background or histories like that. I mean, I painted a piano down in Waterford in the bus station there a few years ago and 
loads of people just kind of came by and you just start learning the history of the place like that and that's always a fun thing too like I find that, you know when you're in studio it can be quite kind of insular and you're working out mm-hmm. by yourself and you're kind of in your own head and then suddenly when you're outdoors you're kind of chatting to people and it's um it's a bit more fun and it's informative as well and you're, and you're learning like that like when I'm done in Waterford painting you're, you're kind of learning the history of the city you're in as well which is great you know it'd be a shame to go anywhere and kind of you know put your artwork there or impose your artwork on a space and not be considerate uh, of the environment you're working in, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely fantastic. And I was just seeing that actually somebody did ask us about the artwork on Carlin Street, uh, mm-hmm. which is the one that you were uh, mentioning. So it's uh, like, I mean, it all... Um, uh, it makes me feel I did uh, study art myself and just by yeah. talking to you it's like oh my god yes art. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's do it again <laughs> yeah no it's great it's just uh I, I always kind of had an appreciation for like growing, growing up just kind of collecting books and stuff and it's kind of been interesting the way I've kind of come around about it through just doing studying you know I suppose more formal graphic design course and then taking in the fine artwork and just kind of merging the two which is kind of fun as well you know it's kind of fun to um you know be fun and not be too uh, kind of institutionalized to what is art and what isn't and what can and what can't be it's always fun to kind of you know push the fold and that's what's always attracted me i think to kind of you know kind of urban art and and kind of you know counterculture art forms and creative forms i've I've always kind of been drawn to those things that kind of upset the, the norm you know yeah that sounds uh, absolutely fantastic. I think uh, we are nearly finished. Uh, if there is any questions uh, that you guys would like to ask Shane, we got a couple of minutes left. Um, don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, certainly. Uh, it would be interesting uh, to um, uh, to put together maybe like uh, when you were talking about documenting even the process with the work in the farm. Um, yeah. Like, were you taking also videos or is it just photos or? No, it's kind of photos. Like, I think that's one thing I'm conscious of as well. You know, obviously I do take photographs to document my work, but I don't try to get too hung up on um, kind of getting too involved in a in document process or overthinking it I find even I kind of like to be a bit more kind of sporadic and have the fun down here and I suddenly if you start thinking of it it's almost like we start making work even for a show your head kind of tends to go in a different space you kind of think of an end kind of process or sometimes you're like oh will, will this be kind of is this what the kind of expected outcome is to be for a show or what and sometimes you kind of be kind of locked into that so I, t- I, t- I take work and I document it. It's always good to have, you know, I mean, especially if you're painting a mural, it could be gone the next day. Uh, and that's, mm-hmm. that's just the nature of the beast, you know, but I mean, um, I don't, and I know I should definitely document them better with better cameras rather than just shooting them on the phone. Um, and I do, and I kick myself, you know, many, many times for doing that, but um, I kind of get too hung up on, on kind of the documenting over the kind of creation process. And for me, that's the fun part is the, is kind of the making and, and the sporadic elements of, you know, taking and adding to to a piece like that, you know, so it, it's, uh, yeah. as long as they don't start overthinking it, then that's fun, just keep enjoying it, really, you know. <laughs> I see that uh, John asked, thank you very much for reminding us of John's question, because I missed it. Uh, so John says, I love Shane's work and his use of the color pink. Tell me about the attraction to pink. I'm also <laughs> interested in the titles of his prints, Cowboys or Indians. Bingo. Was him name or? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> uh, no, they're all secrets. I can't tell you. Interview's <laughs> over. Uh, yeah, no, it's funny. It's, 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 it's kind of interesting. Uh, someone kind of mentioned last night as well to me about the kind of the pink and why is the pink so kind of... Uh, prevalent in my work and where it actually stems from originally was I was doing a commission uh, a print for a friend over New York uh, who just opened a restaurant and she kind of commissioned me to do a print but I wasn't doing abstract work at the time it was more photographic and then kind of architectural and she kind of asked for um, the palette it was actually the palette of of uh, the kind of branding for her for her uh, restaurant 
mm. which was pink and a navy blue. And I kind of, I just had the paints mixed up. It's just one of those things, they were the paints I'd mixed up in the studio at the time and I had to use them. And it was a nice kind of combination. And then as I was making that print, it's quite a large print uh, of an old cool kind of um, Route 66. It's a famous diner, Roy's Diner. And I kind of added a streak of gold into it just to kind of give it a bit of bounce because there's a lot of blue in it. And suddenly it kind of had a pink and a blue and a gold uh, print. And then it was like that. It was just something simple as they were just the prints. They were just the colors are left over from a, from a, from a commission. And then a few months after that, I took two months off work sabbatical just to focus on my own artwork solely. Because uh, I'd been doing printmaking over the years like that. I'd, I'd kind of joined core printmakers out of college and I'd always kind of print on the weekends when I'd come down from Dublin. And um, I kind of just said, look, would it be cool if I had a month or two off just to, what would happen if I could focus solely on my own artwork rather than just being kind of weekend warrior up and down. So we did that and I said to the guys as working at the time, I said, look, do you mind if I take, uh, I can't remember if it was a month or two, it could be just a month, uh, just sabbatical. Um, they were like, yeah, cool, look, we know you do the artwork. Um, your job's here for you when you come back. Um, best of luck. <laughs> so that's what it was. I, I just took a month off and just made stuff and there was no real outcome. There was no plan. If nothing was made, then grand. It was just one of those what ifs. What if I never did that thing? And, you know, it's, what's, what's four weeks out of work in a lifetime? And out of that, that's where the abstract work kind of came. And the pink came from the palette from the previous job. Um, the names, the titles of the artworks, um, they're always largely kind of lyrics or titles of songs I'm listening to while making the artwork uh, or in studio. Uh, Cowboys or Indians uh, is an uncle song. Um, and Bingo was his name is just kind of one of those songs that everyone knows <laughs> but it's funny it's fun because it's, it's nice to I don't really ever kind of have a mad um, you know conceptual thought to my artwork or there's no background story there's nothing there what you see is what you see and that's fun too people see different things um, and I enjoy that I don't like again as I say I don't like to overthink it for me the process is enjoying it as long as I enjoy making it that's all that matters uh, but like having the song titles as names are nice because suddenly people start thinking and they're like, why is it called that? And because sometimes they are so left field as Bingo was his name Oh, you're kind of going like, it's kind of like a smile in the mind as well. It's one of those things that kind of makes you kind of, you know, it stands out. Um, you might find a new song, you know, I can kind of track through time what I was listening to while I was making that work, which is kind of fun as well. I kind of found yeah. that, um, you know, I kind of find, you know, with songs, especially people kind of, songs can be signifiers in people's lives you know it could be your first dance at your wedding it could be your first I don't know disco <laughs> like they are they can be milestones in people's lives I think they're kind of like milestones in my creative process I think so that's that's where the titles come from yeah that's amazing that's mm. really good um and we have here a very last question uh, from Matt Desi <laughs> which is um... oh, for MJ hey it's gone yes <laughs> <laughs> And MJ is asking, um, approaching a wall versus a print, what is the difference? What are the challenges? And also, do the farm animals rock up while you are painting in the field? Uh, yes, I'll answer the last one first. <laughs> they do, but generally they don't. I, I've only ever painted with kind of sheep in the field over the last few years. And it was actually the last, the last cattle feeder I was painting was a live kind of Instagram thing for core printmakers. And it was the first time the cows were left out into the field over winter. Oh. So literally all the cows, it was their first time seeing grass in months. And they were literally charging and jumping all around me, coming over to me, kind of sniffing at the paint, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Same with the sheep. There was a little small pet lamb who wouldn't let me alone. He kept coming over to me and just was just at me nonstop. I had to kind of push him out of the way. And that was the only time it ever kind of happened. And it was kind of cool uh, <laughs> to see that because normally they'd, they'd run. It was just the fact that it all kind of tied in that the cows had just seen the fields for the first time. Uh, so that was fun. And then I suppose the ways of approaching work in regards to print and walls, um, very different. I mean, when you're in a studio space, you kind of have your a lot of time. You kind of go in and you know, there's other artists working around. Like, as I said earlier, I'd kind of have a composition in mind and then I'd work to that um but you know it, it doesn't have to be finished that day as well you know you, you could kind of um yeah. you could start but i still have prints like in my portfolio that aren't even finished two years later but it's not not that i didn't 
say I'll get back to them later. It's just, they're just things that they didn't work out at the time and you find a way you come back to them later. Uh, or things that I didn't even think that were good or nice that suddenly you might show up on Instagram and someone's like, geez, that's lovely. Do you mind if I buy that? And it's like, right, yeah, because I, 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 I didn't really appreciate it. So I'm glad someone does. Um, so like that, yeah, making art, like print work is different like that. Uh, you know, it's different confined space, um, different set of skills. But again, I, I like to still uh, kind of in, enjoy it more so. And coming out of wall, then it, again, it's different, you know, against the scale, it's time. If you're working the festival, obviously, you've got to be in, in and get your work done within a certain time frame. Um, I think I've definitely learned, I've, in time, I've, I've sped up in time. I, I enjoy kind of spending time with a wall and painting and chewing and froing. If something doesn't work, I'll buff it out. I'll come back at it again. And I'll, it's kind of a, an adding and subtraction, subtracting thing I like to do as well, you know, until it works. I don't know. And that's the thing. A lot of time when I'm painting for myself on murals, I don't have a set visual in mind it's done when it's done and then obviously when you're doing festivals it has to be done yeah. uh, so there is that added pressure and I remember going on the first year like I was like I'd never painted anything that scale before and I was felt like totally out of my depth and I was like what have I signed up for <laughs> and I was you spend the first half hour just walking around going what and you just kind of have to jump in and start at it and um then you just you know you enjoy it and you go like that and there's they're all different experiences and you know, even different locations. The first year I was kind of painting just myself uh, uh, and Mantra, and so it was just the two of us. And then last year, there was maybe four or five of us down a length of walls as well like that. And you can kind of walk around and have the chats, which is kind of fun as well, you know, and it's always nice to step back and look and then jump back in. And um, yeah, that's it. Like that, that's why I suppose I kind of do different uh, disciplines of art or whatever, because I don't, I just uh it's it's kind of fun to experience different processes that's i think that's the thing that's always been drawn me to new art forms especially you know yeah that's it exploring the world through absolutely yeah art. like i mean don't yeah just, just make mistakes i like, don't don't be afraid of it. like i could be like you know even again going back to the cork wall like i'd never ever in my wildest dreams thought i'd paint something that size or could even know to start about it but again you know, as I said earlier, there's a great kind of network of urban artists here, like in Ireland. You, you just kind of fire someone a message and say, look, hey, how would I go about doing this? How, how do I paint this, you know? And everyone's so kind of, um, so good with their time and they give you your time with that, you know, because everyone's been at that stage in their career as well, you know, and it's, yeah. you should never kind of forget that. You should always kind of pass on uh, the skills and the things that you learn from others like that. Uh, and that kind of gives you the confidence to step yourself up and, you know, scare yourself a bit more each time like that. And, like that when I painted the wall in Cork, I had an assistant helping me. I'd never had an assistant before. Again, that's a different process as well. You know, you have to be able to kind of tell someone and manage someone what to do as per your spec and then you're working as well. So uh, yeah, you kind of, you just naturally kind of progress and but always kind of scare yourself a bit more, you know, each time and that's how you kind of keep going up and up. Well, how we like it though, leave the comfort zone and always- Yeah, you have to, absolutely. That. <laughs> perfect Jane well thank you so much like thank you. Uh, it was really really interesting and like uh, your passion for art uh, can be um, now I don't have the English word for saying it but uh, it, it it is it comes out from your personality like you know you can thank really you. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much and no, thank you thanks for having me uh, we look forward to having you in uh, in Waterford and Absolutely, keep working yeah. and perfect. Yes, you you can keep up the great work yourself, guys. Always appreciate it. <laughs> See you soon. Thanks, Bye. Christina. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.